Kenneth Branagh is back as Detective Hercule Poirot, and he is also back in the director's chair for the follow-up to Murder on the Orient Express. Let's talk about Death on the Nile. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for Death on the Nile. You can find this on your streaming services right now if you uh, are subscribers of Hulu or or HBO Max. It's on both of those streamers. And I actually saw this in theaters a few weeks ago, but I knew it was coming to streaming pretty quickly. So I decided, all right, I'll just hold off on my review because I was already a few weeks late watching it, you know, in its theatrical debut. So, uh, but now it is available for home streaming and it will be available soon for uh, DVD and Blu-ray as well, or at your Redbox or whatever, uh, if you don't subscribe to HBO Max or Hulu. But uh, in any case, before we dive into this review, I do want to welcome you into Damn Reviews. Thank you for finding my channel. Uh, and indeed, this review, we're on the quest for a 1,000 subscribers. We are uh, just about at that 950 mark, so I'd love to have you come aboard as one of my subscribers. And uh, comment below, too. Let me know uh, what you thought of this movie. Do you think it compared favorably to Murder on the Orient Express or uh, not quite as well uh, in your eyes? Let me let me hear about it. And of course, uh, like this video too down below. That all helps the channel out as we grow. So, all right, let's talk about Death on the Nile. So, uh, like I mentioned up top, Kenneth Branagh is back in the director's chair for this movie. And we know the man can direct. You know, he was just nominated for Best Director for the movie Belfast at the Oscars. He did not win that. But uh, he did win, uh, I guess, screenplay for that movie, and, you know, he's been nominated many times over the decades, so uh, this was his first Oscar win, so that was very exciting, but uh, that is not for this movie, of course. This is uh, a more mainstream picture, you could say, than Belfast. Uh, did clear uh, about $135 million at the box office, so not too shabby in uh, sort of the still the pandemic era, I want to I wanna feel. Um, you know, there's there's a few that break out really big, like Spider-Man, but, uh, you know, m if you're making $135 million in this day and age at the box office, that is pretty good. So, uh, in any event, a sequel is in the works, so there's going to be a third film. And as these all go, you know, they're all based on Agatha Christie novels. This character is an Agatha Christie special. And uh, as well, the uh, detective stays the same, Poirot, but everybody else is different. Because, because of course, you know, ev everything sort of wrapped up in that first movie before we find out what's going on here uh, in the uh, Death on the Nile. Uh, so the people in this one include Gal Gadot, Army Hammer, Annette Benning, Russell Brand, uh, Dawn French, and Jennifer Saunders, uh, Sophie Okenodo, uh, Rose Leslie, and Letitia Wright are uh, all a part of this movie. So another big sort of cast, you know, that's sort of the, the the history behind these stories and these movies is that they have a lot of characters to deal with and figure out uh, who, who's done what. So I looked back at my grade for Murder on the Orient Express because I thought I was sort of in that B range. It was a little lower than that. I gave it a B minus uh, upon first watch back in, I believe it was 2017. So, uh, and this one would have come out, I think, at least a year ago, but uh, COVID pushed it back a few times, so we finally did get it. In the meantime, Army Hammer has had some sort of not-so-great news stories about him, but, uh, you know, they decided to keep him in the movie and not do reshoots and all of that, and uh, I, I think it was fine. I mean, I don't think he's on the, the level of notoriety or, you know, newsmaking as, like, a Kevin Spacey or something like that, where you would have to sort of alter the, the whole movie around him. No, I, I think it's fine. Um, so this version uh, of Poirot's story starts out actually with a backstory on him, and I do believe this was made up for the film. I, I am not 100% sure on that, but I believe I read something that this was, uh, you know, sort of a new creation for the film and not in the Death on the, uh, the Nile novel, but I might be wrong about that. But in any case, it starts out with like a 14 or 15 minute black and white, basically short film uh, about his backstory and uh, how he got, you know, scarred on his face. And so that's why he wears this incredibly bushy and bizarre mustache as one of his trademarks. Um, and, and then we sort of get into the actual, you know, current day movie, uh, which I say current day, it takes place, you know, decades and decades ago. Um, I'm not exactly sure when it takes place, to be completely honest. It could be like the 40s, maybe or something. I don't remember. But anyway, um, the, the novel came out in 1937, so it may have been present day then. I don't know. But uh, in any event, there is a murder and Poirot has to solve it, of course. Um, but 
also because of that intro, uh, we get a good probably 50 minutes to an hour into this movie before the murder even takes place. So it is a real slow build here. Yes, we're getting to know some of these characters. We've learned Poirot's backstory. Okay, let's keep it going. Um, and, and this time we are on, you know, the Nile River. So we're on a boat instead of a train. But the basic tent poles, I think, of both movies are pretty similar. There's eventually a murder, and Poirot, you know, through interviews, has to determine what's going on and who did what. And, uh, you know, his his uh, list of suspects sort of, you know, grows with each, grows or shrinks, I guess I should say, with each interview. So um, I think here are some positives to this movie. The, this is a classic Hollywood style movie, much like the first murder on the Orient Express, which makes sense because these are both movies that have been done before. Um, you know, in Agatha Christie, obviously, like I mentioned, this book is from, you know, almost 80 years ago at this point. Uh, so sure, you know, it, it makes sense, uh, that we would have sort of an old school film feel to it. And I think it works for a movie like this. They're not really going for flashy. They're not really going for, you know, uh, big explosions or, you know, big action set pieces or anything like that. Um, so I, I think it is really, really adept at what it does well in that regard. Um, you know, if you're coming to see a movie with, you know, a, a murder and a mystery element and we, we're, you know, gonna accuse people and character development and all of that, I, I think you'll be pleased with the result of this movie. But, Here's where it falls a little bit for me compared to the other one. So I looked back at my at my old grades, like I said, and uh, B- minus was what I gave the original one. This one for me uh, is in that realm because I think it does some things better. I think the scenery is a lot better. We see a lot of, you know, the, uh, the river and the trees and the forest behind it. And before they get on the boat, we see a lot of great scenery there as well. Um, and, and I think that's something that this one handles better. Uh, than in the first one. And I do like that sort of short vignette, short film, whatever you want to call it, at the beginning about Poirot's backstory. I don't know if it needed to be that long, and I also don't know if uh, maybe we could have shot into the action a little bit quicker uh, afterwards, but I, I did kind of like that that was going on. But um, where it sort of falters for me is definitely in the length. We, we sort of broached that a little bit. Um, but also because of that, it's just a little bit more boring than the first one. I think the first one was a little bit snappier to the to the mix and like, okay, let's dive right in. Here we spend so much time on that. And then there's sort of a side story about Poirot's love life and we dive in a little bit deeper even with that. This is a very sort of character study, uh, a character heavy study on Hercule Poirot himself, um, which I don't really think we got any of that in the first movie, and I'm not sure how much of that we needed. Maybe we could have trimmed a little bit of that off. Um, but look, we know Kenneth Branagh can direct, but I think he's actually more adept at directing, um, you know, more artsy things. I mean, he sort of comes from the Shakespeare world. You know, Belfast, I loved one of my favorite movies of last year, gave that an A. Um, but this one, I think because it has this old school feel, it is very sort of pedestrian looking. Um, you know, yes, there's some lush scenery, but in terms of, you know, interesting shots and interesting techniques, there, there's really none of that. It's, it's a very, very by the numbers, um, sort of murder mystery and, and that sort of thing. And, and it's okay if that's what you're looking for. But for me, it left me wanting a, a bit more. Um, and so for those reasons, I'm going to leave this with a little bit of a, a lesser grade than Murder on the Orient Express. Um, I did think that the twists at the end, um, I think some of them were a little obvious and some I did not see coming. Um, and and I, I feel like Murder on the Orient Express is such a famous story. I sort of knew about that going into it. Um, whereas this, I was definitely a little bit more uh, unaware of, of what the ending was going to entail. Um, so I, I do have to give it props for being, I guess, a little bit more mysterious than Murder on the Orient Express. But overall, yeah, I, I do think it's slightly lesser of a film. I'm going to leave Death on the Nile with a C+. All right, that will do it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see everybody next time. Bye.